Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news overnight, a man is dead after trying to run across Loop 410 on the west side. Details just ahead. And as we get closer to getting a COVID-19 vaccine, President Donald Trump says any stricter FDA guidelines to clear a vaccine must now be approved by the White House. Outside with Live Camp, beautiful night. It is cooler out there. Some of you, perhaps in the Texas Hill Country, maybe on the chilly side this morning. We'll get a check of your morning temperatures as we wait for the sun to rise. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is September 24th. Thank you so much for watching this morning. I had to grab a nice little fleece this morning, 64 degrees. Yeah, that's here in town. Makes me wonder what things are like out in places like Kerrville this morning. Mike Ostra just standing by with an update. Even more fallish. Yes. Yes, indeed. And yeah, it's a really, really nice morning. Uh, we did have a lot of stubborn clouds yesterday. There may be a few stubborn ones uh, later on today, especially off to the east. But uh, beautiful view. Sunrise should be uh, pretty darn nice today. And yeah, look at some of these temperatures. 59 Kerrville Comfort, 60 61 at Bernie Stage, Balverde, and 64 here in town. May drop down another uh, couple of notches here in the next few hours, but oh, what a beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, ragweed is on the moderate side. A little bit of mold is showing up, and like I said, drop down another notch or two. Some clouds, especially to the east this morning, and then later on this afternoon, nice big warm up again, about 25 degrees throughout the day. We make it into the uh, upper 80s. We only stayed at 82 yesterday because of some of those stubborn clouds. We make it to 87 today, which is just about normal, but we will continue to warm up. That's still going to be the trend in through the weekend. How warm will we get? And there is a front way down the road. We'll talk about that coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Thursday morning. No accidents right now we're working on, but there is some construction out there. First, we got eastbound IH10 West. Oh, eastbound is closed down at Camp Bullis Road to La Quintera to get back on the highway. You're gonna have to exit. Uh, you're gonna have to go through that exit right past La Quintera to go back eastbound on uh, I-10 to get to 1604. All right, construction northbound West Loop 1604 North from Bandera Road to Houseman is uh, is uh, one lane's blocked off there. You can't get back on uh, 1604 from Houseman. You're gonna have to go all the way to Babcock to get back onto 1604 northbound there, but just. Keep this construction in mind. Hopefully it gets cleared up soon. And trans guys, this is H37 at Houston. Flowing very smooth right now and looking good there, which is good news in the downtown area. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Officer Nick. Well, new this morning, San Antonio police say an 18 year old man is dead after he was hit by a vehicle while trying to run across Loop 410. This happened around 1130 last night between Marbach Road and Highway 90 on the west side of town. SAPD says the driver who hit the man did stop to try to help. Police say that driver did not see the man until it was too late. He was pronounced dead on the scene. No charges have been filed. Overnight, authorities in Louisville, Kentucky say two police officers were shot and wounded last night during demonstrations, expressing anger over the killings of black people at the hands of police. All this hours after a Kentucky grand jury brought no charge against Louisville police officers in the death of Breonna Taylor. Louisville police say both officers hurt during the shooting last night are expected to recover and a suspect is in custody. During the court proceedings on the Taylor case, prosecutors said the two officers who fired their weapons at her were justified in using force to protect themselves. That's after they faced gunfire from her boyfriend. Still, the FBI is investigating potential violations of federal law in connection with the raid on Taylor's home on March 13th. Here at home, Bear County is reporting a drop in the number of COVID-19 patients in the hospital. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says it appears Bear County is experiencing a plateau in the numbers, but he says health officials continue to remain vigilant. 228 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital this morning. That's a decrease in five since last report. 87 people are in the ICU and 41 are on ventilators. 155 new COVID-19 cases were confirmed yesterday, but no new deaths were reported. More than 40,000 people in Bear County have recovered from COVID-19 since the pandemic started. Capitol Hill now in a testy exchange between Dr. Anthony Fauci and U.S. Senator Rand Paul clashing over the issue of herd immunity. Meanwhile, some encouraging news for teachers and parents. The Washington Post reports researchers have found little evidence that the virus is spreading inside school buildings so far. ABC's Alex Perche has more. This morning, Governor Mike Parson of Missouri announcing he and his wife have tested positive for the coronavirus. No symptoms uh, of any kind. 
The news coming after a stark reality check from the director of the CDC as lawmakers grilled the nation's top health experts on their response to the virus. A majority of our nation, um, more than 90 percent of the population remains susceptible. During that hearing, an exchange between Dr. Anthony Fauci and Senator Rand Paul getting heated when the senator questioned why New York City has beaten back the virus. They are looking at the guidelines that we have put together from the task force of the four or five things of masks, social distancing, outdoors, more than indoors, avoiding crowds, and washing hands. Or they've developed enough community immunity right. that they're no longer having the pandemic. Don't I challenge that, uh, Senator. I'm afraid, because I'm afraid I, I want, please, sir, I would like to be able to do this because this happens with Senator Rand all the time. You were not listening to what the director of the CDC said, that in New York, it's about 22%. If you believe 22% is herd immunity, I believe you're alone in that. At the hearing, health experts tried to convince Americans to take a vaccine when one becomes available. But now President Trump is accusing the FDA of playing politics with the vaccine, apparently reacting to reports the FDA will soon release tougher standards for vaccine makers. That has to be approved by the White House. We may or may not approve it. Uh, that sounds like a political move. This morning, the head of the FDA insisting the agency can be trusted. Our thorough review processes and science will guide our decisions. FDA will not permit any pressure from anyone to change that. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Back to local news now. And the latest today marks two weeks since a drive-by shooting left a child injured on San Antonio's east side. The bullets hit the girl while she was riding in the backseat of a car near MLK and Booker. She was hospitalized. While that child recovers at home, she's still able to feel the support of her school and her teachers. These children come into our classroom and spend all these hours with us in a day, and it's a family. Our, our, our school and our classrooms are a family, so it is very emotional, um, but in a rewarding way. Some of the staff at Kip Esperanza Primary organized a parade yesterday. Teachers decorated their cars, gave gifts, and were able to put a smile on that little girl's face. It's 437 and 64 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a first look at why Carol Baskin of Tiger King fame is now facing a lawsuit. First, let's take a look outside with live cam. 64 degrees at 437 this morning. So if you're about to head out the door, you might want to grab a fleece for now. But Mike will let us know how high those temperatures will warm up when we come back. In your other morning headlines, Nova Scotia is feeling the impacts from the storm that once was Hurricane Teddy. Rough surf could be seen at Herring Cove, about 250 miles due east of Bangor, Maine. Teddy brought strong winds and heavy rain. The storm knocked out power to more than 15,000 customers in the province. Many schools were closed and public transit was suspended in some areas. The storm hit Nova Scotia hardest, but its effects were also felt in neighboring prov provinces. Federal investigators in California trying to figure out the cause of uh, the Bobcat fire. It's one of the largest wildfires ever in Los Angeles County history. It's burned more than 113,000 acres and may have been sparked by a power company's utility equipment. Would it be the first time the company's been blamed for causing major wildfires? Last November, it agreed to pay $360 million to settle lawsuits over wildfires sparked by its equipment. The Bobcat fire has destroyed more than two dozen homes. As of last night, it was only 38% contained. Right now, it is 441, 64 degrees. A still ahead, a closer look at how the Texas court system is embracing new technology as it moves forward with proceedings during the pandemic. And next, new legal drama for Tiger Queen Carol Baskin as she faces a new lawsuit. Well, Carol Baskin of Tiger King fame is now facing a lawsuit connected to dis the disappearance of her former husband. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new legal drama for Tiger Queen Carol Baskin. The family of her former husband, Don Lewis, has filed a defamation lawsuit against the Tiger King star. Do you know who did this or if Carol Baskin was involved? I keep it inside and wait until everybody's gone before I can break down. 
The lawsuit stemming from Baskin's silence on Dancing with the Stars when Lewis was referenced. The lawsuit states Baskin is currently appearing on Dancing with the Stars and is complicit with jokes about Don Lewis's death. Carol Baskin, you danced that, Paso, you smashed it. Well done. We'll have much more on the lawsuit coming up at 7 a.m., plus an exclusive look at a new ID documentary on the disappearance of Lewis. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Accept and embrace this new technology. That's the message for attorneys from State Senator Judith Zaffarini during a recent Zoom seminar she hosted. Our Paul Venema talked to the senator about her impressions concerning the impact of the pandemic is having on the court system. I'm delighted to welcome you to our Zoom meeting titled The Pandemic's Permanent Impact on Texas Courtrooms. Joining the senator was David Slayton of the State Office of Court Administration and Justice Rebecca Martinez from the Fourth Court of Appeals. The hour-long training session was primarily designed to assist attorneys as they navigate the remote court proceedings dictated by the pandemic. Her prediction? They're here to stay in some form. I believe that simply because of popularity and because of convenience that more judges, more attorneys, and more clients will want more virtual hearings. She said virtual hearings have also increased participation. Among the downsides of the pandemic, she said, is the backlog created in the absence of jury trials. There's no way that the number of cases can be moved with the same speed and efficiency that they were before. And actually there was a backlog in many courts before the pandemic. So the pandemic has really exacerbated it. For the immediate future, expect plexiglass barriers, face coverings, and social distancing to be what she said is part of the new normal. Paul Venom, a case at 12 News. Right now it's 446. We're going to check in with Officer Nick. How's the traffic looking out there? Still good. Uh, no accidents to report, but we do have some construction right now. Uh, first construction is going to be eastbound I 10 West at Camp Bullis Road, where the main lanes of I 10 eastbound I 10 are blocked off from Camp Bullis to La Quintera. Then we have this northbound West Loop 1604 from Bandera Road to Hausman. The whole right lane is blocked off there from Bandera to Hausman. You cannot enter uh, back onto 1604 if you are on the access road past Bandera. All right, trans guide time 10 West at Loop 410 East looking really good right now, flowing smoothly. Uh, 410 at Fredericksburg there. Man, that looks great as well. No traffic problems there. And uh, 37 at Houston downtown. That's looking good as well. Thank you, Nick. Boy, those clouds kind of hung in there yesterday, Mike Osterhage. I felt like we were going to get some rain over this kind of hung around. Exactly what this picture says too. Lots of clouds and they left to work and no rain from any of those clouds. It did help to keep temperatures down. Had forecast about 85 yesterday, but it stayed at 82. I don't think anybody complained about that. And uh, these clouds are pretty much going to be getting on out of here to the east. They may be a little bit stubborn off to the east again today, but uh, here in town we should have basically just a whole bunch of sunshine, a couple of morning clouds hanging around here. And I think once again, I'm going to check the app, but that appears to be Venus again, one of the brightest ob or the brightest object in the night sky other than the moon. 63 here in town. Excuse me, this is the uh, dew point temperature. I beg your pardon. And uh, dew points are Again, not bad. You know, you get down below 60 and that's very comfortable. So especially in the hill country, it's pretty nice. And dew points will remain on the lower side. They'll drop down a little bit later on this afternoon. So it's going to be a very pleasant afternoon. However, what it looks like is going to be going on going into the weekend is we'll keep a little bit more humidity around here, uh, especially Saturday and Sunday. That on top of temperatures that are going to be in the low 90s. So it's going to be a pretty darn warm first weekend, official first weekend of fall. Then look what happens. The bottom drops out by midweek, and that's that front that we're still looking at that's going to be uh, coming on through here by the uh, middle portion of next week. Now, it's not going to be one that's just, you know, coming in gangbusters, but at least it's going to trim these temperatures and trim some of the humidity as well. So can, let this loop back on through here. It's very hard to see with these low clouds. You can see them in some of our eastern counties, some of these low clouds hanging over. And, and really, these are kind of the stragglers in behind what's left over of Beta, which is a big rain producer down there around the uh, deep south and portions of the uh, Tennessee Valley and the uh, mid-Mississippi Valley, the mid-south. Now, up to the northwest, notice how they've got one of these big lows, a big counterclockwise circulation up there in the Gulf of Alaska. That in itself 
is not going to be really having a direct effect on our weather. But you get this kind of roller coaster action with these big lows that are developing up there to the northwest and they move across Canada. And you could say that some of the remnants of that just sort of hang out there around, say, Hudson Bay and just above the Great Lakes. And that's what's going to develop into this trough. And we get this massive cold air coming into the Great Lakes by the middle of next week. And so that's what's going to help to pull that uh, front on through here. We get this nice north to northwesterly flow and this is what you like to see this time of year. Like I said, right now it's not looking like it's going to be any sort of just huge blast of cold air, but it'll be nice. It'll be a refreshing fall front. 82 degrees today at uh, noon, partly cloudy skies. And then we're going to be getting into the uh, upper 80s later on today with mostly sunny skies. And the next few days, temperatures we are going to be seeing, again, 90s going in toward the weekend. So, yeah, it's going to be... Uh, I guess you could say, you know, with normal high temperatures, kind of mid upper 80s on the hot side, almost five degrees above normal all the way through Monday. A few more clouds around here. And then uh, with that front, maybe even squeezing out a couple of showers. It's a possibility right now on Wednesday. Wednesday. Got it. Mm -hmm. You were teased with fall, I feel like. But it's pretty good out there right now, though. Yeah, little, it does. Fallish tease. I like these little tastes. Mm-hmm. You get a bowl full later I on. I want a whole meal. I'm on a buffet. Of I, I know we do. We do, too. We do, too. 451, 64 degrees. Well, thanks to the pandemic, you won't see Marvel's Black Widow this year. We'll tell you when the new release date is just ahead. Here are your lottery numbers starting off with pick three. Zero, one, nine, Fireball two. Daily four, four, zero, six, eight, Fireball nine. Cash five, four, seven, 15, 1826, Texas Lotto. 10, 11, 22, 32, 45, 54. And Powerball, 8, 17, 49, 52, 59, Powerball 1, Power Play 2. Four fifty four. another big blockbuster title gets delayed and Celebrity Family Feud is back on ABC tonight. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Before I was an Avenger. I mean, mistakes. Thanks to the pandemic, you won't see Marvel's Black Widow this year. Originally scheduled for release May 1st, then moved to November 6th, Black Widow now set for May 7th of next year. Disney shifting a bunch of other movie dates as well. The thinking is that after poor box office for Christopher Nolan's Tenet, it doesn't make sense to open a blockbuster right now. This will be the first year since 2010 that Marvel hasn't released a single film. Let the feud begin. Celebrity Family Feud is back tonight, and host Steve Harvey tells me that on his daily radio show, he's talking about protests, and social injustice and inequality in the election and COVID-19, but tonight, for an hour, it's time to escape. I mean, look, man, you, you can't address this stuff 24-7. You'll go nuts. We, we, you got to take some time out. And Celebrity Family Feud, man, is a great, a great hour of just, hey, man, let me give my mind a rest from all of this and just, and just shut it down. Tonight's episode features a rap battle, 2 Chains versus Big Boy, and a talk show host battle, Ricky Lake versus Kathy Lee Gifford, tonight on ABC. I became a lawyer when women were not wanted by If you want to learn more about the life of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the documentary RBG is streaming today for free on Hulu's YouTube channel. Ginsburg died last Friday at age 87. The film was nominated for an Oscar in 2018. Happy birthday, Ben Platt, the star of Netflix's The Politician, is 27 today. Our generation is going to save this planet. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Moving right along, it's about 4 till 64 degrees. Still ahead, flames at some north side condominiums overnight. We'll have the latest on what happened from firefighters. And we'll tell you when you can get your hands on Apple's new iPhone 12 coming up in your morning tech bites. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Firefighters quickly respond to flames at some Northside condominiums overnight. Two police officers were shot during Louisville protests following the grand jury's decision in the Breonna Taylor case. I'm Alex Brashe in Washington. I'll have details coming up. And now at almost 5 a.m., we've dropped degrees. 
with 63 degrees. You might need a jacket this morning. Starting to feel like fall, but how long will it stick around for? Good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is September 24th. Sarah's in with us this morning and we are enjoying a, a big change. Well, not a huge change, but a subtle change in our more fall like weather out there this morning. You know, every day that we don't have these triple digits and 90, like really high 90s, it still takes a while to get used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is kind of funny because it seems like just, uh, I always think that when I walk outside in the parking lot, it's like, yeah, it wasn't too long ago. You were just like, oh, while opening the oven door. But no, it's not like that at all this morning. As you were saying, it is very pleasant out there. We're at 63. 57 now in Kerrville. That's really darn nice. And the humidity is also very, very low. The dew points at 61 degrees. That's just about at that threshold of 60 and you get below that and it's very nice. Now with the dry air though, that warms up fairly quickly. So throughout the course of the day, we're going to be gaining about 25 degrees or so. The aquifer did drop down uh, just a one little tick yesterday, but we're still at uh, 664 and the uh, 30, the 10 day average, pardon me, is at 660.6. And as far as the allergens, ragweed is moderate and mold is on the low side. So we might have a couple of uh, kind of stubborn clouds hanging around here later on today, especially off to the east. But then you go upstairs in the atmosphere and we still have some really, really dry air. I mean, this is the really dry stuff. And that's why if you had those holes in the clouds, I know some folks had the clouds kind of sticking around yesterday, but the skies were just that beautiful, beautiful shade of blue and maybe, uh, you know, a little extra moisture up there, but still it's going to be a gorgeous shade of blue if indeed you see a lot of sunshine, which is going to be the case in the western half, western two thirds of our viewing area. Again, maybe a couple of stubborn clouds off to the east. So uh, some clouds to the east this morning, and then we're going to see plenty of sunshine later on today. Upper 80s for high temperatures. A little more yesterday, the clouds hung in there. We only hit 82 degrees, and then uh, over the weekend, plenty of sunshine. Low 90s. We're going to be hitting 90 tomorrow, and low 90s. Some humidity out there as well. So. It's going to feel like summer's got one last little gasp there, but we have a fall a front coming through and it'll feel more like fall late next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Anything going on, sir? It's still just construction, Mike, it's in the same places here. So we got construction. Eastbound IH10 West at Camp Bullis Road. Uh, I-10 West is shut down from Camp Bullis to Lock and Tear going eastbound. So coming Bernie to 1604. Keep that in mind if you're heading that way. We have this construction that's still active. This is northbound West Loop 1604 North from Bandera Road to Hausman. We have one lane blocked off here. Here it is. There's that right lane completely blocked off. This is from Bandera to Hausman Road. You can't exit Hausman and you can't get on the highway if you're on the access road after Bandera in between Hausman as well. You'll have to go all the way down to Babcock or beyond to get back onto 1604 uh, northbound to continue towards I-10. Other than that, things are looking good. Just remember everyone, please wear your seatbelt and get to work safely. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Officer Solis. Well, new this morning, fire broke out at a Northside apartment complex overnight. Fire investigators say it happened at the Capistrano condominiums at 14,000 block of Churchill Estates. They say someone dumped a bunch of trash in front of a gar in front of a garage and lit it on fire. Fire crews were able to get the fire knocked down pretty quickly, but there was damage left on the overhang of the end on the garage door. No injuries were reported. Overnight protests in Louisville erupting into violence. Two police officers were shot. Protesters clashed with officers uh, after a grand jury indicted only one of three officers involved in the Breonna Taylor shooting death. Those charges not related to her death. Meanwhile, the president and his 2020 opponent Joe Biden are weighing in. ABC's Alex Brashey has the latest from Washington. Overnight protest across the country following the grand jury's decision in the Breonna Taylor case. And in Louisville, demonstrations turning violent. We have an officer down. Investigators confirming two police officers were shot less than one hour before the city's curfew when a large crowd faced off with police in riot gear. Both officers with non life threatening injuries. I am very concerned about the safety of our officers. Kentucky's governor deploying roughly 500 members of the National Guard to help. Overnight, Joe Biden tweeting, even amidst the profound grief and anger today's decision generated, violence is never and can never be the answer. The president tweeted overnight he was praying for the officer's shot, but refused to answer questions from ABC News about Breonna Taylor protesters. I have a, a Mr. President, call. just one more question if I can on Breonna Taylor. People are protesting in the streets. What is your message to them? Only one of the three officers involved in Taylor's shooting has been charged, but the charges aren't related to her death. 
Brett Hankinson now faces charges for allegedly endangering neighbors in the apartment complex. He's now out of jail on a $15,000 bond. The grand jury found the other officers involved in that raid gone wrong in March used their weapons justifiably. Detective Miles Cosgrove, who fired 16 times, and Sergeant John Mattingly, who fired six times. The grand jury agreed that Mattingly and Cosgrove were justified in the return of deadly fire after having been fired upon by Kenneth Walker. Walker, Taylor's boyfriend, says he fired a warning shot from his legally owned gun when he did not hear police announce themselves. Brianna's family attorney in a statement called the decision offensive and another example of no accountability for the genocide of persons of color by white police officers. The FBI tells ABC News it is looking into all aspects of the Breonna Taylor case, and that includes the information used to get that search warrant and whether or not it was legal. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, bars now open under special guidelines that say customers can support them by buying souvenirs like T-shirts, koozies, and bandanas. I can tell you the small food and beverage businesses in San Antonio um, and the food manufacturing businesses have really taken a hit. Um, we've seen many, many uh, people who have come through Launch SA. They're taking on debt for the first time. They're renegotiating their leases. They are having to do things just to try to survive. Under the Texas Alcohol and Beverage Commission rules, bars have to make at least 51% of their sales on something other than alcohol. Hill Country Distillers in Comfort, Texas says its regular customers can only buy so much merchandise, so they're offering $8 tokens. The tokens can buy food on another day or can be given to the local food bank, but they're clear to point out that it's not a donation. I'm ringing it up as retail. I'm paying sales tax on it. And then at the end of the month, uh, I will write that check, uh, take it over to the food bank. Those in the food and beverage industry say they have to get creative to stay in business. They are grateful for their customers who understand why they are pushing the extra sales on merchandise. A new UTSA course hoping to educate high schoolers about the history and cultural contributions of Mexican Americans and other Latin communities. 15 students from Brackenridge High School are now taking the college course called Latino Cultural Expressions. It's already impacted high school student Mariah Castillo. I learned a lot about my ancestors that I didn't really know. We focus on the Mexican American experience, on the Puerto Rican experience, and also the Central American experience, and how the cultural expressions, whether it's in visual art, performance, food ways, uh, literary uh, works, that shape or give meaning to their sociocultural and sociopolitical experience in the United States. Most of the course is taught in Spanish, and students who finish the course earn three credit hours. Well, it's time to lace up your shoes for the Head for the Cure Virtual 5K. The race is happening this Saturday, and right now we have a last-minute discount code to get $5 off the registration. All you need to do is use the code, quote, last chance, all one word and all in caps. Since the race is virtual this year, you can participate by snapping a selfie of yourself running, walking, or cycling a 5K in your neighborhood. Then on Saturday, join Head for the Cure on Facebook or YouTube at 8 a.m. and share your pictures. For a link to register, just go to ksatcommunity.com. Time check 508, 63 degrees out there. Still ahead, Google is rolling out updates to its maps with a layer that shows COVID-19 cases. And next, a closer look at how anxiety and depression in pregnant women could cause developmental problems for their newborn. Let's take a look outside with live cam 63 degrees. A little chilly out there for what we're, we've been used to. Will these temperatures stick around for the day? And are we expecting a cool front later at the end of the week? Michael, let us know when we come back. Anxiety and depression, it's still taboo for many, especially pregnant women. This morning, we're talking about how this could affect your baby's developmental outcomes through adolescence. According to a study by JAMA Pediatrics, a mother's depression and anxiety from conception through the first year of the baby's life is crucial. About 15 to 23 percent of women worldwide experience this, and the burden is greater for women who live in poverty or are teen parents. 
The study says the prenatal stage is when exposures and early life experiences may modify development, starting from when the baby is in the womb all the way through their adolescent years. As a result, your child could have deficits in language, cognitive and motor development. The research also shows many women do not seek help because they think it's normal to feel down and tired. Sometimes it's because they are concerned about the stigma related to mental health. But experts say expecting and new mothers who are concerned about their mood should seek help from their physician or psychologist early on. Experts say it's important to stay connected with supportive family, friends and other mothers. They also suggest for mom to do activities that bring joy and to regularly practice self-care. And experts say while these tools may not prevent depression and anxiety, they can help navigate challenges. It may also lead to improved health and well-being outcomes for both mother and child. Right now, 513, still 63 glorious degrees out there. Well, still ahead, a look at why Japan is showing off a huge 25-ton robot that can actually move its arms and legs. And next, we'll tell you about the potential launch date of the iPhone 12. Here's to the doers. To all the people who realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Dupixent can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. And don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Talk to your asthma specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. 516 Google Maps is now helping track coronavirus outbreaks. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Google Maps is rolling out a new feature focused on the pandemic. It's a color-coded layer that gives users critical information on COVID-19 case counts and trends region by region. Google says it will help people make more informed decisions about where to go and what to do. The wait for Apple's iPhone 12 may be over soon. The launch event is reportedly set for October 13th, with the actual devices available on October 23rd. Apple is expected to unveil four new models, including a smaller version some are calling the iPhone mini. Finally, that's a 60-foot-tall, 25-ton robot that's been under construction near Tokyo for six years. It's made of plastic and steel and just moved for the first time. The robot is meant to resemble a character from a hit 70s TV show. Ultimately, it will be a tourist attraction. Those are your Tech Bites. Do you remember Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Oh, yeah. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like when they all get together and they... And way before you were born, there was someone called Ultraman. <laughs> way long... I mean, we're talking 70s here. Okay, and ran okay. And reruns. Officer Nick, what do you remember? Ultraman or Mighty Morphin? No, nah, so that's Mighty Morphin Power... Yeah. It's a Megazord <laughs> from Mighty Morphin there, Power that was, That's the name I was looking at. Uh, I want the toy already. All right, here we go. Uh, no accidents to report. Still clear if you are heading to work. A little bit of construction, but I hope that construction gets cleared here very soon. So we still got eastbound I-10 um, uh, at Camp Bullis Road. From La Cantera is completely shut down, so keep that in mind if we're heading that way, coming from Birdie to 1604. And then we have this here, the right lanes blocked from Bandera to Hausman going northbound on 1604 as well. All right, drive times, eastbound 151, 1604 to 90, we got a nine minute ride. And if you're 90 eastbound from 1604 to I-35, 11 minutes, so those times are always pretty good. All right, 410 at Fredericksburg looking very smooth right now, that looks great. 37 in Houston downtown, one car on the roadway with two coming your way. Look at that, looks great. And 10 at Callahan. Man, it's good. If you're going that way, expect a smooth ride to work for sure. Thank you very much, Nick. What about the, uh, remember the movie a couple of years ago, Pacific Rim? Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's yeah that was pretty good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Kind of very same genre of yeah. robots or creatures, right? Where the people were in, you know, in the head of the thing, mm -hmm. I guess. Definitely in Megazord. Yeah. <laughs> What's really going to be scary is when that thing breaks loose of that. That's, and it comes, and it comes to life and yeah. it starts thinking for itself. But it's already available in case Godzilla decides to return. <laughs> Good.
<laughs> anyway, uh, this was the view out there in Bulverde yesterday. And again, some folks, especially out to the west, a lot of folks saw plenty of sunshine. And then we had these stubborn clouds hanging around there. And uh, right now, as you can see, it is just beautiful, clear skies. There is uh, the planet out there, Venus, looks like 59 degrees in Balverde, 56 now in Kerrville, and a lot of uh, upper 50s in Rio Medina at 59 degrees. Now, when you look at the high temperatures yesterday in the low 80s, but then you've got 90s off here to the west, that's because um, a lot more sunshine off to the west. Things really heated up, and then it only stayed in the 70s further off to the east. And so that was the, it was the cloud cover, which was the, the culprit, if you will. And uh, temperatures today, we're going to be in the mid and upper 80s around the area. So we're going for more sunshine today and some low 90s off to the west. Temperatures around the country right now, yeah, I mean, it's, it's seasonally cool up there to the north, but think back. What was it a week or so ago when we had some 20s up there in Cutbank as well as International Falls? Well, obviously there is some cold air, and I think I'm kind of pushing things by showing Canadian temperatures right now. But what the heck? Hey, we'll get a little taste of fall, even if it is up there in northern Canada. But the, obviously they've got some very cold air pooling up there, and it's going to take a while for that to come down here. But we will get a little, little uh, taste of it coming in here by next week. And that's in the form of another one of these fronts. As of right now, this high is really dominating things around here, and that's keeping, there's the dividing line, if you will, and that's really the barrier from keeping that cold air up there to the north. And then you've got to get some of those those kinks in it, if you will, and that roller coaster action. And that's what's going to be going on as we get into the middle part of next week. So it starts to form up that trough there around the Great Lakes. And this pool of cold air will be dropping down here from uh, Hudson Bay into the Great Lakes by the middle part of next week. So now this is not going to be this huge blast of, of cold air by any means, but it is going to be a nice refreshing front that's going to move through here. Prior to it, though, temperatures are going to continue to go up. So we are going to be looking at uh, the 90s. And basically, this is going to be sort of a reality check, if you will, for, for next week. It'll put temperatures back down to basically normal readings after kind of a warm period coming up here. 82 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. And then a high temperature today up to 87, mostly sunny skies. Maybe even a few uh, stubborn clouds off to the east today. Tomorrow, 90, low 90s. All the way through the weekend, first part of next week, a little bit more humidity. You've got that look on your face, Mr. Austin. I'm scared. And then uh, that front moving through, even a couple of showers by the middle of next week. Uh, yes, it's, it's known you're from Michigan, but it's funny. The, the, as you were talking about Canadian temperatures, you are like, I feel like I'm pushing it. And then you went down to this like northern or almost Canadian accent. But what the heck, eh? <laughs> I, I heard yeah. it too. He's like, what you know? Don't you know, eh? But it was it was nice. It's nice. We can look ahead to Canadian air. Sure, why not? Why not? <laughs> Thanks. Okay. That's okay. that's what it's all about. Right now, 522, 63 degrees. Well, up next, Stevie Nicks is headed to theaters. We'll tell you more about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Singers concert set to play in Select Cinema soon. Pick three numbers, 019 Fireball 2. Daily four numbers, 4068 Fireball 9. Cash 5, 4, 7, 15, 18, 26. Texas Lotto, 10, 11, 22, 32, 45, 54. And Powerball, 8, 17, 49, 52, 59. Powerball 1, Power Play 2. More major movie releases being delayed, but an iconic singer is ready for a night or two on the big screen. CNN's David Daniel has the details in our Hollywood Minute. We have to go back to where it all started. Disney has punted another big movie to Your next husband. year. Black Widow was originally slated to debut this past May. Then when theaters closed due to the pandemic, it was scheduled for November 6th. Now, as theater chains struggle to reopen and lure audiences, the Scarlett Johansson flick has been pushed back again to May 7, 2021. That's bumped other Marvel movies further down the release schedule. The next two big films on the calendar aren't set to arrive in theaters until November 20th. Another Disney film, Pixar's Soul, and the James Bond movie, No Time to Die, which was originally set for release in November of 2019. It's a trip. It's Stevie Nicks is headed to theaters, briefly. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame singer's 24 karat gold, The Concert, is set to play in select cinemas on Wednesday, October 21st and Sunday, October 25th. 
The concert film, recorded on her sold-out tour, features Nick's performing fan favorites and sharing the personal stories behind some of her most famous songs. Tickets and info at StevieNicksFilm.com. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Right now, 527, 63 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, the FDA says it is considering tougher guidelines for a COVID-19 vaccine, but President Donald Trump is still hopeful to have one sooner than later. We'll take a closer look at several factors that make Texas one of the more difficult states in which to vote. Plus, this is the time of year when everyone's immune systems need a little boost. We'll tell you which vitamin and rich drinks work the best when it comes to keeping you healthy. Good morning, hope you slept well, had a good overnight shift. It is Thursday, it's the 24th of September. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I can't believe we're already in almost mid end of September. Yeah, the best thing about the forecast right now is it's feeling kind of like the end of September. Mike Osterhage. Yeah, actually temperatures are slightly below normal this morning. We should be uh, right around the say upper 60s and we are at 63 as of right now. we got some clear skies out there and according to my the app on my phone, that is the planet Venus right now as it is uh, coming up. A couple of the stars are showing up. There may be a few clouds well off to the west, uh, excuse me, well off to the east and that may be kind of on the stubborn side uh, and then plenty of sunshine off the west kind of like what we had yesterday and I think more of us will see a lot more sunshine than yesterday but look at some of these temperatures Kerrville right now is at 56 57 Fredericksburg Rock Springs 61 and again 63 here in town and throughout the rest of today we're going to make it up to 82 degrees so it's going to warm up fairly quickly we've got some there's a nice pleasant dry air in place which doesn't hold the heat in as well warms up much more easily than moist air does. So we make it up to 87 degrees with more of that sunshine. So enjoy today. Now, tomorrow's still going to be a nice morning, but then we're going to start to be a little bit warmer and warm up in the afternoons. We're actually going to end up about, say, five degrees above normal once we get in toward the weekend. Some humidity out there, so it's going to be it's going to be definitely on the warm side, but there is a front way down the road. Talk about that coming up. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Nick Solis. What's going on, sir? Just the uh, usual construction we've had on I-10 uh, and uh, also have some construction on Bandera, but there's eastbound I-10 West at Camp Bullis. Right now, eastbound IH-10 is closed down from Camp Bullis Road to La Quintero. You're going to have to exit. Uh, they're making everyone exit Camp Bullis there, go down the access road, and then you'll get on right after La Quintero to continue down eastbound I-10. This construction here in northbound uh, 1604 from Bandera Road to Hausman is getting picked up right now. I just saw on the trans guide. It looks like they're going to open this up very soon. The right lane was just blocked only. All right, uh, drive times. If you're going I-10 westbound from the northwest side of I-35 to 1604, you got a 12 minute ride. And if you're going I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to I-35, 13 minutes. Really good times there if you're heading in that direction to work. All right, trans guide time right now. 410 at Fredericksburg. That looks good. 37 at Houston downtown. Even even better there. Traffic flowing very smoothly. I-10 at Callahan. Man, I-10 is looking very good right now. And we'll do one more here. 1604 at Petrenko there on the west side looks great. All right, Mark there. back to you. Thank you, Officer Nick. Well, San Antonio police say it does not appear that a driver was to blame for a deadly crash on a west side highway. A man, a pedestrian, was hit and killed late last night. Our Katrina Weber is live near downtown with those details. Good morning, Katrina. Do police have any idea how that man ended up on the highway? Well, good morning. Based on what witnesses tell police, it looks like that man simply darted out into traffic. That was on Loop 410 near Marbach Road. It was dark at the time, around 1130 last night, and the driver told police she didn't see him until it was too late. Police say the woman did stop and try to help the man who she hit, but even with help from paramedics, he died at the scene. And police were not able to offer any information on the man who was killed, not at that time anyway. And again, they say it does not appear that the driver was to blame. They also don't know why that man ran onto the highway or why he was trying to run across the highway. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. President Donald Trump has repeatedly said he expects to have a coronavirus vaccine available to the public rather around Election Day. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, that might result in a face-off with the federal agency. The Food and Drug Administration says no COVID-19 vaccines will be approved without passing its safety checks. Science will guide our decisions. FDA will not permit any pressure from anyone 
to change that. Sources tell CNN the FDA is thinking about stricter guidelines for emergency authorization of a vaccine, much to President Trump's annoyance. We're looking at that. That has to be approved by the White House. We may or may not approve it. Uh, that sounds like a political move. An FDA official confirmed to CNN that such guideline changes do go through the Office of Management and Budget Review. This comes as recent polls show Americans are skeptical about the vaccine process. One member of the White House's coronavirus task force says he's willing to be vaccinated. If a vaccine that's shown to be and proven to be and and uh, authorized by the FDA to be safe and effective, I certainly would take that vaccine and I would recommend to my family that they take that vaccine. President Trump says he has faith in the research underway and says the sooner a vaccine is available, the better. When they come back and they say that we have something that works and absolutely works and they're coming back with great numbers and statistics and tests and everything else that they have to come back with, I don't see any reason why it should be delayed further. I'm John Lawrence reporting. In your morning headlines, an estimated 380 whales have died from a mass stranding of about 470 whales in the west coast of an Australian island of Tasmania. Marine conserva conservation experts confirmed a total of 70 whales have been moved off of the sandbar and released from the stranding. About 20 animals have been prioritized for rescue as efforts continue. Sadly, four whales will be euthanized following an assessment by a veterinarian. Another Tasmanian official said their focus over the next few days will be to contain the spread of carcasses. As whales start to decompose, they blow and they float with the tides. Scientists say it's not entirely clear what caused the whales to wash up on shore. Astronauts on board the International Space Station had to maneuver, had to rather maneuver a piece of space debris from hitting them earlier this week. NASA says this is the third time in the last two weeks the space station has come into close contact with space trash. No crew members were harmed and the astronauts were able to resume regular activities once the maneuver was completed. There are millions of pieces of spacecraft, parts of rockets and out of commission satellites in low Earth orbit. In February, President Trump put in a $15 million request to help the space program respond to issues like all the scrap metal and debris in space. Well, it's 536 and 63 degrees. This time of year, important to keep your body's immunity healthy. Still ahead, we'll tell you about some immune system boosting drinks that can help keep you from getting sick. And next, a closer look at why voting in Texas is much more difficult when compared to other states. And outside with live cam, it is brisk out there, especially in the Texas Hill Country. How much lower could morning temperatures go before the sun starts to make its appearance on your Thursday? We'll check in with Mike. Just about 540, welcome back. Millions of Americans will head to the polls in the coming weeks to vote, but the ease and accessibility of that process varies from state to state. RJ Marcus breaks down why Texas is one of the more difficult states to cast your ballot. A report two years ago in the Election Law Journal ranked Texas as the fifth most difficult state to cast a ballot. So what makes it more difficult to vote here? Texas is one of only nine states to not offer online voter registration. Most states register their citizens when they get their state IDs or driver's licenses. Some states do it automatically when a resident does business at the DMV. In Texas, you have to print out an application and mail it weeks ahead of time. Texas also does not allow same-day registration. More than 20 states allow their residents to register on the day of the election. Studies show same-day registration increases voter turnout by about 7% and does not benefit any political party. Simply registering voters is also not easy in Texas for volunteers who are deputized. Trinity professor Carrie Lattimore says some congressional districts have multiple counties in them, meaning you need several registrars for one race. You have to go through a large process and you have to go through a process in every county. And so in some ways, we don't have enough deputy registrars who can really register people to vote. Um, so that's a barrier. The most debated voting topic during the pandemic has been mail-in ballots. A majority of states expanded mail-in voting because of the pandemic, but Texas is not one of them. Texas is one of six states where voters still have to give a reason besides the coronavirus to vote by mail. Even before the pandemic, 34 states, not including Texas, already allowed anyone to vote by mail and five states had universal vote by mail. State leaders say voter fraud is the main concern not to expand mail-in balloting, but studies show there has been little evidence to prove that. It, it becomes an electoral scare process. If you have evidence of fraud, then that's one thing. If you just have innuendo of fraud, then that's to me illegitimate. 
it really dilutes the the good spirit of the election. Texas's voter ID law has also been debated for years. 17 states do not require a document to vote, while another 15 allow residents to cast their ballots without a photo ID. In Texas, residents have to show an acceptable form of photo ID. You can also show a utility bill and sign a document saying you can't reasonably get a photo ID. The law has eased over time after several legal battles, but also caused a lot of confusion. The use of fear and the, the discussions about illegality um, may lead people who may not be exactly sure um, whether they should are allowed to vote or not. For more on what you need to know about casting your ballot, check out this story on our website or visit our Vote 2020 page on KSAT.com. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. 542, 63 degrees. Up next, we are breaking down which immunity boosting drinks work the best on keeping your body healthy. 545, one of the best things you can do when you're feeling sick is try to boost your immune system, but sometimes traditional methods don't really work. This morning, we have a few immunity boosting drinks that may do the trick. It's important to keep your immune system healthy all the time, but especially when you're feeling a little under the weather. Experts with Healthline say these immune system boosting drinks are full of nutrients that may help. First, try a citrus explosion with orange, grapefruit, and any other citrus fruit. Experts say the vitamin C can strengthen your immune system and can help fight off infection. If you have a cold, vitamin C is great for suppressing those symptoms, which can lead to a faster recovery. Next, try beet, carrot, ginger, and apple. Experts suggest this drink can not only help boost your immune system, it may also decrease inflammatory symptoms. Experts say inflammation is often an immune response to infections from viruses or bacteria. They say ginger is a great ingredient that has anti-inflammatory effects. The drink may even be helpful for those with rheumatoid arthritis. Finally, mix watermelon and mint together. Experts say this concoction is great if you have sore muscles, which is a symptom of the flu or the common cold. Well, whether you are sick or not, experts say these are great drinks to make to keep your immune system healthy. But if you're feeling ill, it's best to see a doctor. Still best to see your doctor. Well, in your morning consumer headlines, Volkswagen has unveiled the ID4, its first all electric SUV. Company says the ID4 is its first long range electric vehicle for the U.S. market. It's part of the automaker's broader shift towards electric cars. The base selling price for the ID4 will be roughly $40,000. There's also a widely available $7,500 federal tax credit for buying an electric vehicle that effectively knocks the starting price down to about $32,500. VW expects the price to drop even more in 2022 to around $35,000 after ID4 production begins here in America. For now, though, the vehicle will be built in Germany. Pumpkin spice lattes, pumpkin spice muffins, pumpkin spice cookies. You get the picture. This time of year, everything is pumpkin spice. But what about pumpkin spice mac and cheese? You can thank Ugh. Kraft for this one. <laughs> All of us went, Bleh. Yeah. Well, the box of the fall flavored comfort food comes with dry macaroni noodles and a pumpkin spice flavored powder to add to the classic cheese powder. It also comes with cinnamon and to sprinkle on top and a coffee mug. But there's a catch. You'll have to add your name to a wait list and only 1000 people will actually get it and it's only available in Canada. But fall fanatics can use it for some do it yourself inspiration in the kitchen. I was wondering if there was such a thing as like pumpkin spice toothpaste or something. Yeah. And I'm and I'm betting that there is. I'm just not coming right up. There's there's mock versions of stuff like here. I've just found pumpkin spice spam. I know that doesn't exist, but somebody has clearly modified the outside of the can just it's, a little it's bit. It's too much. It's gone overboard at mm, this point. It kind of has. Let's see how traffic's looking. 548. Nick, how's your morning going so far, sir? I was going good, Mark. Right now, I got pumpkin spice lattes on my mind, so now it's going even better. All right. Right now, things are looking good. No accidents to report. A little bit of construction. Construction on Bandera to Hausman. They're going uh, northbound on 1604 is clear, but we still have this construction. Eastbound I-10 West at Camp Bullis Road. The eastbound main lanes of I-10 are uh, closed down 
from Camp Bullis to La Quintera. Hopefully this does get cleared up very soon. Other than that, that's it. Things are looking good all around the city. 1604 Petrenko looks great right now. It's flowing very smoothly there. 1604 Bandera, this is where we had construction earlier. Looks like there's still some road work there, but the lanes are now open. And here I-10 at La Quintera, we still have construction where the eastbound lanes of I-10 are still shut down. Uh, closest thing I found, Mike, was a, a pumpkin spice shampoo, and it's a big, huge bottle. Almost looks like a like a Clorox bottle size. Um, I, I now I like. It. Have you ever tried a little garlic, a little garlic powder in your mac and cheese? Oh, that's, um, that's very good. That's, that sounds have, doable. Yeah. Have you ever tried hot Cheeto Mac? That's really no. Good. Oh, oh yeah. no, I, I've no, heard about, but I haven't very, tried it yet. Very good. You're a fan? Oh, huge fan. I can't go without it. <laughs> now, I do, now, okay, what's well, it? Because I'll, I'll toss a little bit of nutmeg if I make fettuccine Alfredo, uh -huh. and a little bit, you know, kind of thrown in there. So I wonder. I don't. But I, I don't. Uh. We'd like to sample that, Mike. Maybe a casserole-sized pan. Bring it in. We'll let us sample it safely tomorrow. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yes. And you know the joke there. What? Tomorrow. What? Like what? the sign in the bar, free beer tomorrow. Well, it's always never, tomorrow never gets here, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so you're saying it's not going to happen at all. <laughs> I didn't say that. I just oh. said tomorrow. Okay. Uh, beautiful view of the, uh, the moon, and of course, it is going to be full next Thursday on October the 1st. And so at the end of the, the month of October, right in time for Halloween, we have a blue moon. All right, beautiful out there right now, and can't really see it in this picture. I think it's right behind that banner, but in the uh, planet Venus. And she should have a decent looking sunrise. It was interesting yesterday. Sun came up. It was gorgeous out there and the clouds moved in very, very quickly. There may be a few stubborn clouds left over off to the uh, east later on this morning and this afternoon. But uh, for the rest of us, we're going to see a bunch of sunshine. All right, 63 degrees in town, about uh, say three, four degrees below normal. A lot of 50s, some upper 50s in the area. And the question being, are we going to get any cooler? Well, dew point temperatures are very close to the actual air temperatures and you can't drop down below what this number is. So we could in theory drop down to if everything stayed as it is right now down to 61 degrees. Uh, I think we're going to be staying pretty steady, maybe a degree or so in the next uh, couple of hours. Hey, the aquifer here was August all the way in through the 1st of September and we didn't have basically diddly for rain around here as that obviously the aquifer was suffering from that. And then we got some of that rain and it has been sitting pretty well above 660 for the uh, the 10 day average. So that's some very, very good news. All right, satellite radar picture and it's kind of tough to see, but there are some low clouds again still hanging around in here. Basically, the stragglers, the leftovers from what was Tropical Storm Beta, and that's going to continue to work its way uh, off to the kind of the east, northeast, in there around the deep south and the, the mid south area. And as far as upstream, there's nothing going on there, and that's what's in store for us the next couple of days. A lot of sunshine around here. Temperatures will continue to go up. Now, yesterday, because of the cloud cover, we did stay a little bit uh, lower than expected, but we're going to be getting up into the mid upper 80s today, 90s, and then low 90s going in through the weekend. We'll have a little bit of humidity sticking around in the afternoon. So it's not going to be pumpkin spice weather necessarily this weekend, but middle of next week, that's a different situation. All right, 82 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then high temperature. Make it up to 87, right about normal. Plenty of sunshine out there. Humidity is going to be okay today. And then tomorrow, nice, uh, pleasant start again. We should make it right around uh, low mid 60s and big warm up throughout the day. Then notice how the low temperatures are going to be staying in the upper 60s. A lot of areas may even stay in the low 70s in the mornings as we go in, in toward the weekend. So that's a good indication that we have a little more humidity around here. Low 90s for high temperatures. And then the next front's going to move through. It looks like uh, sometime late Tuesday, Wednesday. And that'll hold us in the low 80s. A couple of showers, too. Not bad. Yeah. I think we should thank him one more time just for such a thank you. perfect forecast. Just send donations. Donations. <laughs> we will send donations somewhere. Thank you, Mike. 553, <laughs> 63 Tomorrow. degrees. <laughs> Let's take, it our, take a look at our lotto numbers. Pick three, zero, one, nine, fireball two, daily four, four, zero, six, eight, fireball nine. Yes, Mike, it does help when you point at the numbers. Thank you. Pick, uh, cash five numbers, four, seven, 15, 18, 26, lotto Texas, 10, 11, 22, 32, 45, 54, and yeah, Powerball, 8, 17, 49, 52, 59, Powerball one, power play two.
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on those protests across the country after a grand jury declined to charge three police officers for killing Breonna Taylor in her own home. Overnight in Louisville, demonstrators clashed with police. At least two officers were shot. And now the grand jury decision is raising new questions about the case. So this morning, Taylor's family is responding and the attorney for that family joins us right here on GMA. It's quite the fish tale. Two of them actually but uh, they have the photos to prove it. Two Texas anglers caught the same lemon shark nearly one year apart off Padre Island National Seashore. There's a major difference though. One photo, the shark is visibly pregnant. Both catches part of the Texas Shark Rodeo. The team tournament is a catch and release event that helps collect data for conservation of sharks. Both anglers talked with us here at KSAT. We have a full article online at KSAT.com. Beautiful fish. For many of us, work is a major source of stress. Still ahead on GMSA, a closer look at how long-term exposure to unmanaged stress can take a toll on your body and mental health and what you can do to possibly make things better. Let's check the roads with Transguide at I-10 and Wurzbach. We'll get updated on the morning commute as we head into the 6 o'clock hour. Your top stories coming up and Mike's somewhat chilly forecast. We need to grieve again. We have been grieving since day one. It is like a wound that never heals. That was Brianna Taylor's cousin after a grand jury did not charge any of the Louisville police officers for their role in Taylor's death yesterday. We will take a look at how protests broke out overnight across the country and turned violent in the state of Kentucky. Yeah, as a matter of fact, two officers have been shot overnight there in Louisville. And here at home, a man is dead after running out onto Loop 410 overnight. The investigation continues to figure out why he did it. Taking a look outside with live cam. Oh, it looks like a pretty clear sky out there. 6 a.m., 63 degrees. You may need to grab a fleece this morning, but how much will it warm up? Mike will let us know. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is September 24th. And yeah, it's somewhat cool out there this morning. Mike was telling us a little bit earlier in the newscast that temperatures right now are actually below normal. Ooh, I was, I was chilly when I walked out. Actually, we're going to start out with traffic. My apologies. Messed up the order yet again. <laughs> Nick, good morning to you, sir. How good are morning, things Mark, looking? Good morning, Sarah. Things are looking good right now. So, uh, definitely have one accident just came out. We were clear all morning. Now we have one accident. It's going to be westbound northeast loop 410 exit ramp to McCullough Avenue. Now this just came out getting very minimal details on it other than that it, it is on that exit ramp there and SAPD is blocking the exit ramp on McCullough from westbound northeast loop 410. So expect a delay if you're heading that direction. Still working on this construction eastbound I-10 west at Camp Bullis Road. The uh, main lanes of eastbound I-10 are still shut down from Camp Bullis to La Quintera for the time being. Hopefully that gets cleared up very soon. All right, let's go to Transguide now. Tenant Medical flowing smoothly. Tenant Wurzbach looking good right now. All the I-10 corridor looks great. Uh, 37 at Southeast Military. Southside, that looks very good as well. And we'll do one more here. We have 37 at Hackberry, which is looking great. All right, Mike, football weather, huh? Just about, yes. It does feel, feel a lot more like that. <laughs> now, once we get in toward the weekend, I don't know if it's going to be feeling quite as football weather-ish. But, uh, yeah, get out and enjoy it this morning. And like Sarah was talking about, you might need... A light little jacket, perhaps a sweatshirt if you're uh, heading outside right now. And as you can see, some pretty good uh, clear skies out there and a plane heading off to uh, destinations unknown. And look upstairs in the atmosphere. <clears throat> Excuse me. We got some really dry air. So yesterday I know we had the clouds hanging in there very stubborn. Uh, we had a lot of sunshine off to the west, obviously, but in those holes in the clouds, it was just that vivid, beautiful shade of blue. And that's what we can expect again today. And this uh, water vapor imagery, this was the really, really dry air and now maybe not quite as dry, but still I mean, it's going to be a beautiful day out there. As far as the allergens, um, ragweed is on the moderate side. Mold is low and temperatures this morning are probably going to be staying steady for the next couple of hours because 
the air temperature is getting close to the dew point. It can't drop down below that. So we're still below normal though by about so oh, good for almost five degrees. And then by noon, we're going to see a big warm up this morning. By the way, we'll make it up into the low 80s by noon and then top off with a high temperature today in the upper 80s. So we're going to be gaining about uh, say a good 25 degrees today. No rain out there at all. As a matter of fact, no rain now through it's looking like about the middle part of next week. It's going to be a warm weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Mark. Thank you very much, Mike. Happening overnight, anger, frustration, and sadness over decision not to charge police officers involved in Breonna Taylor's death pouring into America's streets yet again. Across the country, protesters criticizing a system they say is stacked against black people. In Louisville, Kentucky, where a police officer shot and killed Taylor while serving a no-knock warrant while she slept. Some of the protests turned violent. Louisville city officials say two police officers were shot overnight. They say the officers are expected to recover and a suspect has been taken into custody. In our next half hour, we we'll learn more about the case and how President Donald Trump and Joe Biden are reacting to the protests. Well, back here at home, the case at Webb team analyzed records when it came to shootings where law enforcement officers shot and killed people. Here in Bear County, those state records show an increase compared to last year with three months still left in 2020. Right now on KSAT.com, we break down the numbers with a graph that also details the cases by ethnicity. The article is on our homepage. New this morning, a man is dead after a driver hit and killed him on Loop 410. Police say it happened between Marbach and Highway 90 just before midnight. They say the man ran across the main lanes of 410 and the driver of the car did not see him. Driver stopped, tried to help. She's not facing any charges. Meanwhile, investigators are trying to figure out what led up to the man running across that part of the interstate. Local health officials report 155 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County and Mayor Ron Nuremberg says the seven day rolling average is at 148 cases per day. 228 patients are currently hospitalized with the virus. 87 are in the ICU and 41 are on ventilators. UTSA and Trinity University waiving test score requirements because of the pandemic. The two schools follow many universities around the country doing the same. A UTSA official says they started seeing students having trouble register and take the test because testing centers closed or reduced the number of people allowed to take it at one time. The new rule will last at least until the end of this year at UTSA and for the next three years at Trinity. Well, nationally, several issues are at the forefront of the coronavirus response. On one hand, the Washington Post re reports researchers found little evidence the virus is spreading in schools, as some had feared. But that only applies to primary and secondary education as cases continue to climb on college campuses. ABC's Alex Brechet has more. This morning, Governor Mike Parson of Missouri announcing he and his wife have tested positive for the coronavirus. No symptoms uh, of any kind. The news coming after a stark reality check from the director of the CDC as lawmakers grilled the nation's top health experts on their response to the virus. A majority of our nation, um, more than 90 percent of the population remains susceptible. During that hearing, an exchange between Dr. Anthony Fauci and Senator Rand Paul getting heated when the senator questioned why New York City has beaten back the virus. They are looking at the guidelines that we have put together from the task force of the four or five things of masks, social distancing, outdoors more than indoors, avoiding crowds, and washing hands. Or they've developed enough community immunity right. that they're no longer having the pandemic. Don I challenge I'm that, uh, I'm Senator. Afraid, because I'm afraid. I, I want, please, sir, I would like to be able to do this because this happens with Senator Rand all the time. You were not listening to what the director of the CDC said that in New York, it's about 22%. If you believe 22% is herd immunity, I believe you're alone in that. At the hearing, health experts tried to convince Americans to take a vaccine when one becomes available. But now, President Trump is accusing the FDA of playing politics with the vaccine, apparently reacting to reports the FDA will soon release tougher standards for vaccine makers. That has to be approved by the White House. We may or may not approve it. Uh, that sounds like a political move. This morning, the head of the FDA insisting the agency can be trusted. Our thorough review processes and science will guide our decisions. FDA will not permit any pressure from anyone to change that. Alex Prechet, ABC News, Washington.
608, a new course at UTSA hoping to educate high schoolers about the history and cultural contributions of Mexican Americans and other Latin communities. 15 students from Brackenridge High School are taking the college course called Latino Cultural Expressions. It's already impacted high school student Mariah Castillo. I learned a lot about my ancestors that I didn't really know. We focus on the Mexican American experience, on the Puerto Rican experience, and also the Central American experience, and how the cultural expressions, whether it's in visual art, performance, food ways, uh, literary uh, works, that shape or give meaning to their sociocultural and sociopolitical experience in the United States. Most of the course is taught in Spanish, and students who finish the course earn three credit hours. Well, District 5 City Councilwoman Shirley Gonzalez is trying to get more people to fill out the census by offering free tacos. This Saturday, District 5 is holding a Census Action Day. Arizona Cafe will offer free tacos if you come fill out your 2020 census form. It is happening at the Las Palmas Field Office on Castroville Road. It starts at 9 in the morning on Saturday and goes until noon. Hey, head for the Cure 5K happening Saturday. And right now we have a last minute discount code to get $5 off registration. All you need to do is use the code last chance, all one word, all caps. Since the race is virtual this year, you can participate by snapping a selfie of yourself running, walking, or cycling a 5K in your neighborhood. Then on Saturday, join Head for the Cure on Facebook or YouTube at 8 a.m. to share those pics. For a link to register, just go to ksatcommunity.com. Well, it's 609 and 63 degrees. Bars are facing tough times in the pandemic as they struggle to find ways to make money outside of selling alcohol. We'll hear from a local bar owner or bar owners who are turning to merchandise sales to try to stay in business. Anxiety and depression are important issues to keep in mind. If you're pregnant after the break, we'll see how they could affect your baby's development through adolescence. Outside with live cam, it was a beautiful starry night here in South Texas. It's a little on the cool side this morning, but seems to fit the date, September 24th. How much cooler could we get this morning? And what do you see some of these hill country temperatures coming up on GMSA? Six thirteen. Anxiety and depression is still taboo for many people, especially pregnant women. This morning, we're talking about how this could affect your baby's developmental outcomes through adolescence. According to a study by JAMA Pediatrics, a mother's depression and anxiety from conception through the first year of the baby's life is crucial. About 15 to 23 percent of women worldwide experience this, and the burden is greater for women who live in poverty or are teen parents. The study says the prenatal stage is when exposures and early life experiences may modify development, starting from when the baby is in the womb all the way through their adolescent years. As a result, your child could have deficits in language, cognitive and motor development. The research also shows many women do not seek help because they think it's normal to feel down and tired. Sometimes it's because they are concerned about the stigma related to mental health. But experts say expecting and new mothers who are concerned about their mood should seek help from their physician or psychologist early on. Experts say it's important to stay connected with supportive family, friends and other mothers. They also suggest for moms to do activities that bring joy and to regularly practice self-care. Well, experts say while these tools may not prevent depression and anxiety, they can help navigate challenges. May also lead to improved health and well-being outcomes for both mother and child. Officer Nick, we're going to check in. How's the traffic out there? Yeah, right now dealing with this major accident here is westbound Northeast Loop 410 near the exit ramp to McCullough Avenue. Now this accident is fairly new, but it is requiring two records at the scene. Looks like it's going to cause some traffic delays here as we get into the uh, 630, uh, 630 time frame there. But just keep this in mind. This is westbound Northeast Loop 410 uh, just right before the exit ramp to McCullough Avenue uh, there. All right, construction. This is now cleared, so we're good to go. Eastbound I-10 at Camp Bullis is now completely open. This is coming from Bernie to 1604. You have a smooth commute if you're heading in that direction. Trans Guide 90 at Medeo Creek. This is the eastbound lanes of 90 uh, at Medeo Creek there. A little bit moderate traffic picking up. Not too bad yet. Westbound wise, it's looking very smooth. Thank you, Officer Solis. Uh, Mike is here. Let's roll that big, beautiful yellow bus. Yep. You know, you don't really have to warm up the car. You don't have to cool down the car. It's just sort of right. I'm almost perfect kind of a morning, you know? 
just <laughs> pleasant enough out there. So 63 degrees and uh, we'll stay, I think, steady for the next couple of hours. There may be a couple of clouds, especially off to the, the east. And then later on this afternoon, plenty of sunshine and that's going to uh, warm us up quite nicely. We're going to make it into the mid and then even upper uh, 80s after that. Looking for 87 for a uh, high temperature today. That was a great shot of the moon and also want to show you this picture. Some of the beautiful, beautiful fall flowers. I have no idea what that is, but it is very pretty. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, we've got some clear skies out there right now. As you can see, there's a couple of stars that are showing up, and it looks like a uh, plane flying around as well. And uh, temperatures, look at that, out to the west around Hondo, uh, Uvalde, Del Rio. We're looking at uh, some mid 60s, 70 right now in Del Rio, and then just go up north of there into the hill country, and you've got temperatures that are down in the 50s right now. Fredericksburg's at 57 degrees, 59 right now in Kerrville. So, really, really nice and one of the reasons for that is the fact we've got clear skies no blanket on top of us and fairly dry air so dry air does not hold the heat in like that moist air does that's why all the time you can always kind of tell if you look at the temperature like going into the five day seven day forecast pardon me when we see temperatures toward this weekend the lows being in the upper 60s 70s you can kind of surmise that we've got some more humidity around there. It's not letting temperatures drop down quite as much, but we've got this dry air in place and, uh, and actually dew points have dropped down considerably just in the past 24 hours, five degrees here in town and 10 degree dew point change in Fredericksburg. So yeah, we've got a nice blast of a uh, drier air coming on in here, but in the afternoons, those dew points are going to be staying up a little bit more as we go in toward the weekend. So you'll definitely feel it. And we're looking at low 90s, and it's probably going to feel a little bit warmer than that going into the weekend. But then look at that. By the middle of next week, dew points drop down considerably. It's because we've got another front moving on through here the middle of next week. Today, we are going to make it up to, <clears throat> excuse me, 82 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today. We will make it up to, so right after about mid-afternoon, mid-80s, and then top off at 87 with mostly sunny skies. Tomorrow, another pleasant start in the morning, and then in the afternoon, we will warm up into the 90s and low 90s by uh, the weekend. But again, notice the difference there. You know, tomorrow, starting off low to mid-60s, up to 90, and then it's upper 60s, and to the low 90s over the weekend. So that's with the uh, extra humidity. So it will definitely be a warm kind of summerish. Summerish? Summery. Fallish and summerish. In summary. Right. <laughs> uh, front comes through the middle of next week and a couple of showers are possible. We always know what you mean. That's the scary thing. I got thing. you. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 619, 63 degrees. Well, Carol Baskin of Tiger King is now facing a lawsuit connected to the disappearance of her former husband. We'll learn more in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. moving and there's moving with move free ultra it has triple action support for your joints cartilage and bones and unlike big glucosamine chondroitin pills it's all in one tiny pill try move free ultra now feel the difference with united healthcare medicare advantage plans there's so much to take advantage of like zero dollar copays on virtual visits wow uh -huh. zero dollar copays on primary care visits and lab tests wow Plus, $0 copays on hundreds of prescription drugs. Wow. Uh -huh. United Healthcare Medicare Advantage plans, including the only plans with the AARP name. Most plans have a $0 premium. It's time to take advantage. Wow. New Advil Dual Action with Acetaminophen fights pain in two ways. Advil targets pain at the source, while Acetaminophen blocks pain signals. The future of pain relief is here. New Advil Dual Action. In this morning's GMA First Look, new legal drama for Tiger Queen Carol Baskin. 
The family of her former husband, Don Lewis, has filed a defamation lawsuit against the Tiger King star. Do you know who did this or if Carol Baskin was involved? I keep it inside and wait until everybody's gone before I can break down. The lawsuit stemming from Baskin's silence on Dancing with the Stars when Lewis was referenced. The lawsuit states Baskin is currently appearing on Dancing with the Stars and is complicit with jokes about Don Lewis's death. Carol Baskin, you danced that, Paso, you smashed it. Well done. We'll have much more on the lawsuit coming up at 7 a.m., plus an exclusive look at a new ID documentary on the disappearance of Lewis. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. I can tell you the small food and beverage businesses in San Antonio um, and the food manufacturing businesses have really taken a hit. Um, we've seen many, many uh, people who have come through Launch SA. They're taking on debt for the first time. They're renegotiating their leases. They are having to do things just to try to survive. Well, bars that opened under special guidelines say customers are supporting them by buying souvenirs like T-shirts, koozies and bandanas. Under the Texas Alcohol and Beverage Commission rules, bars have to make at least 51 percent of their sales on something other than alcohol. Hill Country Distillers and Comfort says regulars can only buy so much merchandise, so they're offering eight dollar tokens. The tokens can buy food on another day or can be given to the local food bank. But they're clear to point out that this is not a donation. I'm ringing it up as retail. I'm paying sales tax on it. And then at the end of the month, uh, I will write that check, uh, take it over to the food bank. Those in the food and beverage industry say they have to get creative to stay in business. They say they are grateful for the customers who understand why they are pushing the extra sales on merchandise. Google Maps is rolling out a new feature focused on the pandemic. It's a color coded layer that gives users critical information on COVID-19 case counts and trends region by region. Google says it will help people make more informed decisions about where to go and what to do. United Airlines is trying to make travel easier by launching an interactive map. Customers can search on United's website to find inexpensive ticket options. Now you will be able to search for vacation destinations based on your budget instead of just locations. California putting the brakes on selling cars that run on gasoline. Governor Gavin Newsom signed an executive order yesterday requiring all cars sold in California be zero emission vehicles by the year 2035. He says the goal is to fight climate change and create more jobs in California. Newsom says green vehicles will be the next big global industry. 626 and 63 degrees. Texas can be a difficult state to register to vote in. RJ Marquez will tell us about the rules you need to follow to register right here in the Lone Star State. And stress at work can make your life miserable, but we will have some ways to reduce that stress in our next half hour. And we'll check on traffic with TransGuide coming up here on GMSA, and we'll check in with our traffic expert, Officer Nick Solis. police say it looks like it was just an accident. A man hit and killed on a west side highway. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have the details. Two police officers were shot during Louisville protests following the grand jury's decision in the Breonna Taylor case. I'm Alex Brache in Washington. I'll have details coming up. And outside with live cam, beautiful starry night waiting for the sun to come up about a month ago at this time. We were at 83 degrees roughly at this time of day. And we're 20 degrees cooler than that. It's a good way to start the day. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is September 24th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. I, I will take this cool weather. I mean, I, I definitely need a jacket or two because I, I freeze anything below 75. But. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's we're lower 60s here in town, out in the hill country. Yeah, we've got the we got some 50s that are showing nice. up this morning. It is it's gorgeous out there, and as you can see, there's uh, kind of an early little glow, the uh, initial glow of the uh, sunrise. There's a plane uh, either heading out or taking off. I can't tell which direction that thing is uh, moving. Temperature right now, yeah, we are in the uh, the low 60s. Dew point is at 60, so we're pretty much going to be staying where we are, maybe uh, fluctuating a degree or so because temperatures cannot drop down 
below what the dew point temperature is. There's a slight bit of a wind out of the uh, northwest at five. Yeah, and talk about some 50s. We got 57 Bandera, Comfort, 59 uh, Bernie Stage, Lost Mabel's, Kerrville, even uh, Balverde at 57 degrees right now. So yeah, light little jackets, not a bad idea. Ragweed is moderate and mold is on the low side. So partly to mostly cloudy skies, because especially up to the north, uh, up around Austin and then off to the northeast, there are a lot more in the way of some clouds being reported right now. And uh, we're going to see plenty of sunshine, especially to the west. There may be some stubborn clouds off to the east later on today, making it in the upper 80s as opposed to low 80s yesterday because of that cloud cover that we had. And then going in toward the weekend, lots of sunshine. And it's going to be warm and we're going to have a little bit of humidity around here as well. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. All of our wonderful folks in blue and here is one of them, Officer Nick Elise. Thanks, Mike. All right, Mike, one major accident right now we're dealing with. This is going to be near the airport westbound northeast loop 410 just before the exit ramp to McCullough Avenue. Still working on this accident. Should be getting clear though here pretty shortly. All right, drive times. I eastbound I-10 from FM 46 to 1604. You got a 39 minute ride and if you're I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to 35, it's 13 minutes. So really good times if you head in that direction. All right, trans guide time 14 at Fredericksburg looking good. It's flowing very smoothly all around the city. You got time for a pit stop 37 at Houston downtown. Look at that. Very little traffic there light there and 10 at Callahan looking amazing flowing smoothly. All right, everyone, please make sure you wear your seatbelt. Go the speed limit and get to work safely. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thanks, Nick. San Antonio police say they don't expect any charges against a driver who hit and killed a man on a west side freeway late last night. They're calling his death an accident. Mark Katrina Weber is live near downtown with that story. Katrina, good morning. Do we know anything about that man who was struck and killed? Good morning. The only thing that we know is that he was 18 years old. Police have not released his name just yet. Also unknown is why he was trying to run across the highway. It was dark at the time, around 11.30 last night, when this crash happened on Loop 410 near Marbach Road. According to witnesses, the man darted into traffic, trying to run across the highway. Police say the driver told them she, wasn't, she didn't see him until it was too late, and they say that she was not able to stop in time. Now, they did say that driver did stay at the scene and try to help the man. Paramedics also arrived and tried to help as well, but it was too late. There was nothing anyone could do. Uh, again, no names released, and it does not appear that the driver will face any charges. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Overnight protests in Louisville, Kentucky erupted after a grand jury indicted one of three officers involved in Breonna Taylor's case. Protesters marched against the ruling after none of those charges were related to Taylor's death. Some of those demonstrations even turned violent. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump and Joe Biden are weighing in. ABC's Alex Brache has more. Overnight protest across the country following the grand jury's decision in the Breonna Taylor case. And in Louisville, demonstrations turning violent. We have an officer down. Investigators confirming two police officers were shot less than one hour before the city's curfew when a large crowd faced off with police in riot gear. Both officers with non-life threatening injuries. I am very concerned about the safety of our officers. Kentucky's governor deploying roughly 500 members of the National Guard to help. Overnight, Joe Biden tweeting, even amidst the profound grief and anger today's decision generated, violence is never and can never be the answer. The president tweeted overnight he was praying for the officer's shot, but refused to answer questions from ABC News about Breonna Taylor protesters. I have a, a Mr. President, just one more question if I can on Breonna Taylor. People are protesting in the streets. What is your message to them? Only one of the three officers involved in Taylor's shooting has been charged, but the charges aren't related to her death. Brett Hankinson now faces charges for allegedly endangering neighbors in the apartment complex. He's now out of jail on a $15,000 bond. The grand jury found the other officers involved in that raid gone wrong in March used their weapons justifiably. Detective Miles Cosgrove, who fired 16 times, and Sergeant John Mattingly, who fired six times. The grand jury agreed that Mattingly and Cosgrove were justified in their return of deadly fire after having been fired upon by Kenneth Walker. Walker, Taylor's boyfriend, says he fired a warning shot from his legally owned gun when he did not hear police announce themselves. Brianna's family attorney in a statement called the decision offensive and another example of no accountability for the genocide of persons of color by white police officers.
The FBI tells ABC News it is looking into all aspects of the Breonna Taylor case, and that includes the information used to get that search warrant and whether or not it was legal. Alex Prache, ABC News, Washington. And again, the two officers shot overnight in Louisville are expected to be okay. Federal investigators looking at the cause of the Bobcat fire, one of the largest in L.A. County history. It's burned more than 100,000 acres and may have been sparked by a Southern California utility company, Edison Electric. Wouldn't be the first time the power company's been blamed for causing wildfires. Last November, they agreed to pay $360 million to settle suits over wildfires sparked by their equipment. As of this morning, the Bobcat fire is only 38% contained. And the wildfires in California are also having an impact in the state's wine region as well. Growers are saying that the smoke has tainted the grapes they grow. They say it's causing an ashy flavor for the 2020 vintage, which could have a long lasting economic impact. The president of the California Association of Wine Grape Growers says the fires will be the single worst disaster the community has ever faced. Space junk becoming more of a problem. Astronauts aboard the International Space Station had to maneuver to avoid a piece of debris from hitting them yesterday. NASA says this is the third time in the last couple of weeks, the space station has come into close contact with space trash. The agency says there are millions of pieces of spacecraft, parts of rockets, and out of commission satellites in low Earth orbit. Millions of Americans will head to the polls in the coming weeks to vote, but the ease and accessibility of that process varies from state to state. RJ Marquez breaks down why Texas is one of the more difficult states to cast your ballot in. A report two years ago in the Election Law Journal ranked Texas as the fifth most difficult state to cast a ballot. So what makes it more difficult to vote here? Texas is one of only nine states to not offer online voter registration. Most states register their citizens when they get their state IDs or driver's licenses. Some states do it automatically when a resident does business at the DMV. In Texas, you have to print out an application and mail it weeks ahead of time. Texas also does not allow same-day registration. More than 20 states allow their residents to register on the day of the election. Studies show same-day registration increases voter turnout by about 7% and does not benefit any political party. Simply registering voters is also not easy in Texas for volunteers who are deputized. Trinity professor Kerry Lattimore says some congressional districts have multiple counties in them, meaning you need several registrars for one race. You have to go through a large process and you have to go through a process in every county. And so in some ways, we don't have enough deputy registrars who can really register people to vote. Um, so that's a barrier. The most debated voting topic during the pandemic has been mail-in ballots. A majority of states expanded mail-in voting because of the pandemic, but Texas is not one of them. Texas is one of six states where voters still have to give a reason besides the coronavirus to vote by mail. Even before the pandemic, 34 states, not including Texas, already allowed anyone to vote by mail and five states had universal vote by mail. State leaders say voter fraud is the main concern not to expand mail-in balloting, but studies show there has been little evidence to prove that. It, it becomes an electoral scare process. If you have evidence of fraud, then that's one thing. If you just have innuendo of fraud, then that's to me illegitimate. It really dilutes the, the good spirit of the election. Texas's voter ID law has also been debated for years. 17 states do not require a document to vote, while another 15 allow residents to cast their ballots without a photo ID. In Texas, residents have to show an acceptable form of photo ID. You can also show a utility bill and sign a document saying you can't reasonably get a photo ID. The law has eased over time after several legal battles, but also caused a lot of confusion. The use of fear and the, the discussions about illegality um, may lead people who may not be exactly sure um, whether they should or are allowed to vote or not. For more on what you need to know about casting your ballot, check out this story on our website or visit our Vote 2020 page on KSAT.com. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. 640, 63 degrees. Well, for many of us, work is a major source of stress. After the break, we will learn how work stress, if it goes unchecked, can impact your well-being. For many people, work is the source for most of their stress. Feeling some sort of tension is normal with jobs, but when it becomes an everyday thing, it can end up affecting both your physical and emotional well-being. David Sears has some steps you can follow to lead to less stress from work. 
It's no secret that work can be stressful. From constant emails to meetings to making important deadlines, it's enough to make anyone feel pressure. But according to Healthline, there are simple things you can do to reduce your stress at work. First, understand how stress affects you. It may sound simple, but it can be easy to underestimate just how much you're affected by stress. Experts say long-term exposure to unmanaged stress can take a toll on your body and mental health. It's also a potential link between anxiety and depression. Second, take time out of each day to write down what made you stressed. Acknowledging and recording stressful situations can help you understand what's bothering you. Be sure to include the people, places, and events that gave you physical, mental, or emotional stress. Next, it's important to take time for yourself to recharge. While most jobs are on a fast-paced schedule, taking even a few minutes each day to recharge can help prevent burning out. And if that doesn't help, taking a few days of vacation can help ease your mind. Experts say disconnecting completely from work can help. Lastly, find a balance between your work and personal life. Working around the clock will easily burn you out. It's important to make boundaries between your work and home life to keep you from overdoing it. Experts also say to look out for signs of stress. Some of those can include low self-esteem, headaches, changes in appetite, low energy or fatigue, and insomnia. David Sears, KZ 12 News. You stressed? I'm, I, I don't know. Like, I was thinking that the, 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 that story was like, um, am I stressed? Should I start writing down things I'm stressed about? So you're stressing about stressing? Exactly. Okay. All right. We've got some work to do. Let's check traffic right now. See how the roads are looking with Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mark. Right now, dealing with one accident here. So the accident on 14 and McCullough is clear. Good news there, but we're dealing with this accident. This is going to be South Zalzamora Street at Guadalupe Street. It looks like one. It's two vehicle accident where it's blocking one of the lanes there. I'll get you more details on this accident when I can. All right, here we go. Trans guy 10 West at Loop 410. Looking good right now. 410 at Fredericksburg looking good. Things are, it looks like traffic's getting a little more moderate to heavy all around the city, but still flowing very good. 37 at Houston. That looks great. And uh, I 10 at Callahan. Very smooth there as well. Thank you, Nick. We here at KSAT are one big family, and we'd like to wish a happy birthday to one of our family members this morning. Sarah Spivey, look at her. <laughs> There's our meteorology team. She is the sweetest. Oh, my yep. God. She's one of my, no and offense to everyone husband, here, Michael. one of my favorite, fav favorite, favorite, favorite people here at KSAT. Yeah, sometimes, and Mike, you probably get this often, are the people the way they seem yes. on air in person? Aww. And the Aww. answer Aww. undeniably is yes, Mike is just the same. <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean, there's three of the nicest people you've ever seen, yeah. you've ever met right there. But no, Sarah is just, I mean. She is an absolute sweetheart. She, she really is. is. Just as kind as can be. Heck of a, I mean, the heck of a meteorologist too, co-worker as well. Singer, guitar player. Yeah, and, and what's funny too is, you know, we saw the picture of the five of us and sometimes we're all just kind of shuffling off who's going to do what and where and schedule or something like that. And you go, okay, you're going to, and she kind of takes charge, you know, yeah. and here yeah. we'll do this and gets everything all in order and everything. Well, happy birthday, Sarah. Happy I don't birthday, know if Sarah. she's up right now, but yes, happy birthday. I kind of call her, she's like a little spring breeze, just, you know, that comes on in, so anyway. <laughs> Happy birthday. All right, beautiful picture out there uh, from Catula yesterday. Absolutely gorgeous. And obviously to the west and southwest, we had a lot more clear skies yesterday and warmer temperatures. And then we had some of those clouds that were hanging on in here. Beautiful view here in town. Obviously, just a couple of wispy clouds that are showing up. There are a few more clouds off to the uh, north and to the east right now. High temperatures yesterday, yeah, big difference from west to east, 90s and then 80s and 70s. Clouds, a few more clouds, and then we had lots of clear skies or sort of mixtured sunshine clouds in the middle. And as far as uh, today, we are looking at some upper 80s and some low 90s, mid upper 80s around the area today. And as far as the heat index, now this computer model has the heat index actually slightly below what the air temperature is because the humidity should be dropping down somewhat. And so it may actually feel a little cooler than what the actual air temperature is today because we're going to have some dry air in place. That's not going to be the situation going in toward the weekend. All right, quick check of the uh, tropics and there is nothing right now. Now, granted, there are the remnants of, it's just a low out there, of beta, but there is nothing as far as any tropical systems nor any tropical development forecast for the next uh, couple of days out there. 
in the Atlantic Basin at all. All right, just in the past uh, with some updated computer model data, and I was just talking with Katie Blake about this as well, uh, some of the computer models are now moving things along even quicker as far as next week is concerned. High pressure is going to be dominating things right now. Here's the dividing line between cooler air up to the north and not as cool air down to the south, and we are going to be heating up as we go in toward the weekend. And now there are a couple of computer models that actually want to hurry this along and get somewhat of a front moving in here by Monday as opposed to Wednesday and really knocking temperatures down then. So we'll go from say low 90s over the weekend and then the week is going to be starting off on the cooler side next week. Obviously this can fluctuate still a few days away, but it is encouraging that we may see some uh, more fallish temperatures a little bit sooner. 82 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and then high temperature today 87, mostly sunny skies. Now the next couple of days we're going to start to get up into the 90s. 92s over the weekend and based on that I did amend that somewhat as far as the first front moving through here on Monday then another maybe reinforcing shot later Wednesday into Thursday. So I'm taking temperatures back down to about normal readings by uh, the first part of next week. And I believe we are unanimous in agreeing to the amendment. Yes. Okay. All right. Seconded, Aye. thirded, and all that <laughs> stuff. So parliamentary. Thank you, Mike. 650, 63 degrees. Well, being upbeat is one thing, but if you toss aside challenges others are going through with cheeriness, you may be doing more harm than good. Tomorrow on GMSA, we take a look at toxic positivity. Wow, toxic positivity. No, now I feel like, oh, was that too toxic with my positivity? Yeah, eh. eh, maybe. It's it's a tough world we live in, Sarah. <laughs> uh, right now we're taking a look at your sunrise. The news you need to know before you go is coming up live right here on KSAT. We'll be back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on those protests across the country after a grand jury declined to charge three police officers for killing Breonna Taylor in her own home. Overnight in Louisville, demonstrators clashed with police. At least two officers were shot, and now the grand jury decision is raising new questions about the case. So this morning, Taylor's family is responding, and the attorney for that family joins us right here on GMA. Two legs were no match for four wheels. A man running across the West Side Highway was hit by a car and killed. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That crash happened late last night. The driver told police she didn't see the man when he darted onto Loop 410 near Marbach Road. It was dark outside at the time, around 11.30 last night. Police say the woman behind the wheel did stay around and try to help the man. Even paramedics were not able to save him. He died at the scene. Now, the only thing we know about the man at this point is that he was 18 years old, according to police. They say they do not expect to file any charges against the driver. Reporting from near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. It's now 5 till 7. Before you head out the door, Officer Nick Solis. Yeah, let's check. Let's take a look at the trends guide here. Okay, so this is 10 Lock and Terror. That's looking good. 35 at Randolph flowing smoothly right now. 10 and Dominion have some traffic barrels there, but it's still flowing. Not smoothly, but it's moderate. And 10 and Medical looking good. Just remember, wear your seatbelt and get to work safely, please. Mike? We are down to 62 degrees now here in town. Got some 50s in the hill country, and we're just going to leave this picture up there because it is so spectacularly beautiful. High temperature today up to 87 degrees. Uh, maybe a couple of clouds well off to the uh, east of us, but it is just going to be obviously a spectacular day today, and it is going to be warming up this weekend. We'll make it up into the uh, low 90s, but front's going to move through next week and at least get us back down to uh, normal readings again. And one more time. Happy birthday, Sarah Spivey. Happy birthday, Sarah Spivey. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And a beautiful sunrise. Yes, and it, I know it's not cold out there, Mike, but it certainly does look crisp and clear. Great way to start the day. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9.